Hi, I'm Brandon Grazley. I teach computer science, and this is a program that one of my students, James, has written. Uh, we're working on an arena fighting game in class, and uh, so I'm just going to run the program for you, and there's a problem that we're going to fix. So here is uh, sort of the basics of the GUI. This is, we're just in the initial stages of developing this, and when the uh, you can see some of the, the values here are missing, and when we click the attack button, we get an error down here. And let's take a look. I'm just going to close this. We get an exception, an illegal argument exception specifically, and the bound must be positive. Okay, let's look at where this is happening. So we're going to read through this. This is called the stack trace. We're getting that error trying to generate a random number. So random.nextint, which in, that's in a file called random.java, which we don't really see. But where is that being called? That's being called here arena game .java line 69 well that's this file that we have open there are two files GUI and game let's go down to row 69 and that's this row here this line okay we see a call to damage value is a random uh, a random object and we're calling next int attack range okay bound must be positive that would be this value here has to be a positive number so apparently it's not well we can look back through our code and see that you know maybe that there there are some places where those there there it is right there on line 48 attack range is being set to this value maybe that line there is not working properly something like that or it could be in another place well what we're going to do instead instead of trying to go through all this code and figure out what's going wrong we're going to use some of NetBeans's um, debugging features so the first thing we're going to do is on this line I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose toggle breakpoint. You can also hit control F8 for that. And you can see it's, it's lined up in, in red here. There's the uh, little stop symbol to say that when we run this code in debugging mode, we will stop the execution at that point. So normally we run using this button here, run the project. But next to it, debug project, which is control F5. When we run it now, it will run and it will pause the execution anytime we come across that row that has this breakpoint. You can see down here we're running and we also have a debugger console. Just let things run the course here. Okay, here's our game. Everything's fine so far. And I'm going to cl click the attack button, which as you can see, let me just get this out of the way for a second. This, when I, cl when I do that, eventually it will call player attack and we're going to have that problem right here. So I'm going to click that button. And now, you see it's lit up in green. Let me get this out of the way again. We are here. We're at this spot in the program. And before this runs, before this call to next int runs, let's go and see what we have. Down here, you see the variables uh, view. If this doesn't show up for you, go up to window and debugging, and you'll see it right here. You can pick all the things you might want. And <clears throat> right here, this is uh, what's coming up. This is the arena game. If I open, expand this, it'll show me all the fields, all the variables that are part of this class. Ah, look, they're all here and they're all zero, which is the initial value that you get for creating any int. These values were never initialized. And so there's my clue now. It's not that attack range was being done incorrectly on this line up here, line 48. It's that uh, this code here, prepare level, never ran. And I can actually see James has a comment here, things to add, prepare level. Well, here's where I'm going to do that. There's the arena game. Uh, let, me, let me stop all this first of all. Here's the arena game uh, constructor, which says to... Um, why am I not stopping? There we go. Here's the arena game constructor. These are the things that happen when the game is begun. And below that, I'm going to type in prepare level and I'm also going to do a, a GUI dot update all which just updates what you can see on the screen now my breakpoint is still set and so I'm going to run in debug mode one more time once that loads here we'll click the button and we'll inspect these variables again to see what their values are now when I come across this point in the program Ah, now first of all, I also I already noticed that these values are all filled in. That's a good sign. 
that means the prepare level thing ran and then when I clicked uh, when I ran up the update all method all of these got populated so that's cool let's click the attack button ah, there we go we're in gr the green mode here now we are at this point in the program let's expand this to see what we have and all of those variables now have values so let's check out attack range 4 okay that sounds pretty good let's continue the program right here you did one damage all right that's great attack oh it paused again because I got to that same line again and I can continue the program again and let's see we did three damage that time it looks like things are now fixed so by setting a breakpoint that picks a spot in our code where we can inspect and see what's happening. Let me show you a couple other tricks. First of all, I can get rid of that just by clicking here. Without actually setting a breakpoint, if you just want to do something once in a while like this, what you do is you put your cursor at the beginning of this line, and then under the debug menu, instead of choosing a debug project, go down here to run to cursor and it will pause at that time just once. So you can check out an individual spot without setting a, a formal breakpoint. So let's try that again. Here's my game. I click attack and it's going to sort of have a temporary breakpoint right there. And now I can inspect and take a look at the values again. Okay, so this is a really powerful way to inspect the variables in your program. Um, and you, sorry, let me pause that. Um, you can do a few other things with it. Check out the debug menu to see all the things you can do. Like you can step into, um, uh, sort of go through one line at a time through your code. Uh, you can step over something, so you can skip something if you want to. Uh, you, the running to cursor we already talked about. You can also set these uh, watches. So we set, uh, right, so we set a breakpoint, and then we looked at the variables. But you can also set watch points, which are slightly more complex. We're not going to deal with them right now. But if you need more than just being able to inspect the variables, you can take a look at uh, watch expressions and, and uh, use those as well. So if you're having a problem, you can trace through your code and try to see what's happening. But I also recommend um, using the debugging features in NetBeans to inspect your variables so that you see if what you have at a particular spot is what you're expecting to have. Okay, I hope that's been helpful and that will help you to debug your code moving forward. Thanks.